Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. Well, no, Sonny what? and Stacks show. <laughs> Produced by Chatting with Stacks. We'll say it like what? that. What? <laughs> What's going on, man? What's up, brother? How was your weekend? Uh, it was great. It was yeah? Great. It was good, man. Good. Yeah, we got to start our weekend off like this. <laughs> Monday. See you, later. See you later, William. You turd. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Nah, it's all good. You don't need to. Not important. <laughs> Get the week started off right. So how you been, man? How you feeling? All right. Uh, yesterday was a fucked up day, but what are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to have those, right? Yeah. I'm just waiting for the doctor. To, the other doctor to call about doing that ablation. I hate when you gotta wait. It's crazy. Too much shit, man. But let me tell you something. Everybody on Facebook, did you see it? The fucking outpouring of love and uh, unbelievable. Thank you so much. There are a lot of people that care. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it is amazing. Starting all kinds of prayer prayer circles and this and that. And Tommy Boyd is here. You're a great guy, man. Thank you, brother. Latin Thank Butterfly, you. how you doing? Thomas, what's up? James, congratulations on sobriety, James. 78 days sober. Do it again. Nice. Great Jedi, how are you? Got a lot of people in the house starting to pour in. Big boy, how are you, man? <laughs> Thomas says, bye, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let the bowl lid hit you on the way out. Steve, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah, there's some people there's some people out there that don't like that toilet thing. No, they hate it. They're like, I'll flush myself, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, <laughs> well, you you'll catch it. <laughs> hey, that's their thank, problem. Thank you, Latin butterfly. Thank you, Tommy. Because obviously, uh we're doing great, man. Things are great. We got a lot of great guests lined up, and uh, I couldn't be happier, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the guests are unbelievable, the ones we have lined up. I think uh, people are going to be pleasantly surprised. It's a nice uh, potpourri yeah. of people. A little sprinkle of some people. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Willie. Get back on the Nutsack Nugget show. <laughs> I don't know who that is, James, but okay. Um. I want to let people know, too, (laughs) that uh, it was a great weekend. I went to church, had a good St. Patrick's Day dinner. It was great. How long did you spend on the porch afterwards? You know, getting rid of the cabbage. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The cabbage. Yeah, them... uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you gotta there air it out go. a little bit, huh? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're gonna be going over the video with Skinny Joey Merlino. Who's there? Benny Chicken Cutlets is here. Hey. Skinny Joey, finally, it's a that I think it was 16 segments or some bullshit. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, he, that he Vlad really, yeah, he milked he it. Really, <laughs> he only he really them, like I don't know, three minutes, some of them, six minutes. Yeah, they're re- yeah. really short. At least when I do segments, they're they're uh over 10 minutes, some of them are uh 20 at least. I remember well, I interviewed short Freeway shorts. Ricky Ross. Who... Yeah, he put this short in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the first clip right here. Shout out to the Skinny Podcast. Make sure you guys go subscribe. There are some legit guys out there who aren't like, uh, you know, these people from uh, Cowtown pretending to be, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're pretending but it's very weird. Well, yeah, I remember I interviewed Freeway Ricky Ross, who at one point was one of the biggest drug dealers in America. He ran the whole West Coast. 
And at one point, his drug connect ended up testifying against him. Hey, Vinny, we got more of uh, more of that interview is going to be dropping. There's part three, four, five, and six. So there's four more parts on the way. Um, if you want to see all of the interviews, they're on members only. Because we got imposters. So, hey, that's how we got to do it. It's what it is. Stand for. Stand for. And he ended up getting life in prison, which he ultimately got reversed. But I remember him telling me something very interesting. He said, when I first got to prison, I was angry. I was like, how could this guy do this to me? I made him hundreds of millions of dollars. He met my family. I met his family. And then a light bulb went up over his head and he said, oh, he just had to accept that snitching was part of the world of crime. No, you don't. What do you think? Do you think snitching is a part of the world of crime? Well, I think it's become. I, I think it's become the norm on shit. Yeah, it yep. definitely has. Hey, we're working on the T-shirts, 100%. We, we got them on the way. We're going to have a bunch of different designs for you guys, some pretty pretty funny things, and it's going to be good. But um, I want to know what you guys' opinion is. Do you think snitching is a part of the world of crime now? I think people gotten used to that type of shit. Right? Yeah. They look up to Sammy the Bull. Like, come on. How much worse does it get than that? Well, you know, it's it's the it's the it's the it's the TV shows, you know, it's it's the movies. It gets all glorified, and you know, it's not it's not a fun life. I know I you know I've never been involved heavily in it, but I've hung with people, very close friends of mine that did it, and it's not a fun life. Yeah, I've never been involved with the mob or any of that type of shit. I was a gang mm -hmm. member, and I'm not proud of that. I'm proud that I got out of the gang. I got out of the drug addiction, and I'm Absolutely living a, a be proud. good. Yeah, the, that's something to be proud of, glorifying Absolutely. violence or glor glorifying that type of life isn't something to be proud of. And right. people are like, it's changing so much. Hey, if that's what people like, Go watch someone who glorifies the shit, but you won't get that over here. Uh, it, it, there's nothing crime. to glorify. Have... No, it, it's a terrible life to be involved with that type of shit. It's I, a 20, 20, 24 7 life. You go to sleep with one eye open. You can't trust the guy that you just had dinner with. Uh, you know, it, it's not, it's not, it's not something to be glorified. I will tell and, stories about how how bad it was and some of the things we got involved in, but I'm not here to glorify any of that because it's right. not, um, a, a true, a true stand up guy gets away from that type of life and, and lives the right way, whatever Correct. way you think is living the right way, because there's not like a cookie cutter mold out there for people. You know, everyone's different. People think they know everything, but hey, they, they should have a fucking, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They should be telling the future or something. Take it easy. Look, look what Pink Panther just wrote. Put that up on the screen because that's it right there. Be proud that you turned your life around. You are an actor with IMDb page soon be everywhere. Got that right, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, I look up to the people who really change their life. And um it's what it's what you should be proud of. Not not that life, you know. A lot of people glorify the bullshit. And it's crazy. Let's get back to the content. Let's, let's not be surprised it. that most people end up snitching on. Once you accept that, then you don't get angry over people snitching on. First of all, I made the mistake of getting in the drug business. That was my first mistake. Mm -hmm. My next mistake was I went back into the drug business as I said I quit. Yeah. So what he did is he only did what people do in the drug business. They tell. They set you up. Hmm. And for somebody to go into the drug business and not understand that 
which I was in the drug business and didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. um, but I came to grips with it. It just becomes part of the game. I mean, would you agree with that? No. No. He says no. 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 I don't agree with that. Yeah, but that's why they didn't want mob guys involved with the drugs, right? Because it was a dirty business. Yep. And people Absolutely. could just tell on you. There's, there's too many people involved in the in in the whole transaction of things. That's why that part of that world has the most murders. Not glorified. You don't hear about probably 90% of them. But, oh, drug uh, murders? Yeah. Then uh, Scarpa's son got murdered over a drug deal gone bad, right? Supposedly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said, Thomas says Gene will be watching from the back row with his mummy eating hot dogs, <laughs> applying Vaseline slowly. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I mean, everybody that told on me got caught doing their own crime. It ain't like me and you went and robbed the bank. I went in and then we got caught and you told on me. They all got caught. Ralph got caught selling meth. Everyone got caught doing their own crimes. Pete the Crumb got caught. He was playing fucking cards on top of three dead bodies they buried 25 years ago. They, they were dead. They were getting life and no pro, never getting out. So the old age came in and said, yeah, Joey told me this. Joey told me that. How the fuck, fuck, how's it even fucking hold up? I don't, I don't understand it. I'm the get out of jail. Did you ever see Monopoly? Get out of jail free. That's what the fuck <laughs> it is. It's that fucking easy. And they do it. They, they, they take them. How many people were going down there to try to testify against us? I was in jail. They robbed my locker. I said on the podcast, I had fucking 80, 50 packs of cigarettes, stamps, you know, stamps or money in jail. They took my fucking indictment, nothing else, and my phone book. Mm. Then they tried to put me in a cell. When I got moved, I beat the case in Philly. When they, they shipped me to Beaumont, when I came back from USP Beaumont, they, they sent me to Hudson County. They put me in, who do you think they put me in a cell with? I couldn't think of his name. Mark Goodwin. He testified against the Traits brothers. I know he's a rat. Like it's known. I walk in his cell. He said, how you doing, Joe? I said, get Derek, the fuck out of the cell. He said, what? Get out. I went right to the cop and I said, listen, get me out of the cell. Put me in the hole. I ain't going to cell with this motherfucker. And they, <laughs> and they moved me on another block. I know what he was going to do. I'd be in a cell with him two weeks. Even if I didn't say a word to him, he's going to come and say, yeah, Joey told me he did this. Joey told me he did that. I didn't give him the chance. I, I get me the fuck out right now. You go in the cell. He's a rat. And they move, put me in another block. Yeah. I mean, but if you think about it, though, what's the most valuable thing in someone's life? Freedom. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And freedom. It's freedom, pretty much. Well, time, yeah. you know, because if you spend your time doing negative things, mm -hmm. it's, it's only going to cause negative and uh but freedom, it's the worst thing you can get stripped away from you. Like, you're trapped. And and time's ticking by, and you're just sitting there like, what the fuck? It's you know, hard. And it's when, hard, when they get man. somebody to, to testify against somebody else, there's no due diligence done. All you have to they ask you is, are you willing to say that in court? If you say yes, you're golden. Whether it's fucking true or not, you're yeah. going on. Their hands are clean. Hey, this is what he told me. What can I tell you? And that guy will get up, old girl, stand in the court, raise your hand, say yes, boom, 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 point the finger, and then that guy is going away for 25 to life, and this guy's out in the streets in two years. The craziest thing is when people are involved with a crime together or say, say I tell you go kill this person. And First then, of all, you don't tell me nothing, all right? Let's yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the person that orders it, and then he tells on the people that did the crime, and he gets right. to walk away? How right. the fuck is that possible? It's it's an unfair situation. The whole thing, the whole RICO thing is unfair. It's unconstitutional. It's it's It got to be so good. They got to be so good at what they were doing uh, that, that they had to come up with something else. That's it's always crazy. been my, my that's been my Rico, opinion. Man. Rico decimated the mob. Oh yeah, but there's, there's no defense against it. No. If you if you make that a law that I can't be with you or me and you, 
you know, we're, we're part of the same unit and you're the boss and you're going out and doing shit and you get pinched. Then I got to go with you because I work for you. And then you know, it, gives, like, it gives credibility to these low lowlifes who weren't even involved like that. Correct. They're like, oh, look on the indictment. <laughs> what does right, that yeah. mean? It's a piece of paper from court. So what? Right. Everything right. in court paperwork isn't true. Before we go, the only the thing that people feared the most was a superseding indictment, right? Now with Rico, it, it could come at any time. It could come in a week, a month, a year, two years, three years down the road, whatever investigations they got going. So you might be looking at your calendar saying, holy shit, I go home in, th in 30 days. And then on the 29th day, you get hit with the Rico and then, the, oh. And they bring you back. Or I've Isn't seen it? people, I've seen people with state cases. And they're about to finish their state case and they get hit with an indictment with the yeah. feds. And no then they got to go from the state to the feds. Mm -hmm. it's like, fuck, mm -hmm. I thought I was getting home. They think they're going mm -hmm. home and nope, they get scooped up. Well, that's, that's the, psycho I got that's the psychological stories. game. It's deadly. I got some funny stories about people that were in prison and they thought they were going home and it turned out to be not the case. <laughs> and I'm going to tell those stories down the road and uh, okay. you, guys, you guys will enjoy that. But I also want to say rest in peace to Frankie Gotti. Today is 44. Today, years. that's right. Thank you. 44 years ago, he was yeah. uh, killed in an accident. And uh, it's terrible. The way he went was terrible. The way the whole thing went down, you know, his mom yeah, hearing the hearing no. all the commotion and go running down the street and there's your there's your little boy laying in the street going gone and uh. the the mom having to deal with that and then like with the neighbor and all it was just really bad, man. I feel bad for the people. see the guy every day. You'd have you'd have to see him driving down the street, standing on his lawn, smoking a cigar, and like, wow. And he didn't fix the car, right? He just he left didn't fix like the that. car, so they had to see the tent, and yeah, yeah it was it's, tough. Yeah, it's terrible. I remember when I was um, growing up, someone I was close with was killed by a car. They were hit, and uh, I was in, I think, middle school. I was young, man, and uh, her and her friends got ran over. She got. She was killed instantly. It's terrible. But let's get back to the content. So send your condolences to the family, and let's get back to the content. Priceless. Right but, 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 but what I'm saying is, there's nothing more valuable than time. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Did you hear that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He had an idea. Time, because we all right. have a limited part. Time. Yeah. Yeah, and freedom. It's time priceless, but, 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 but what I'm saying is <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Freedom time, yeah, yeah, and freedom. It's time priceless, but, 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 so if a person could ultimately tell on you in order to get more time in terms of, you know, out of a, out of a jail cell, you can't be totally surprised you're going to do that. Like you said, you could just be hanging out with a guy talking about nothing and they'll turn around and make up a bunch of stuff about you just to get out of prison quickly. Yeah. I'm going to get out of jail car free. That's yeah. But so he was, he was told on by people who had nothing to do with him. How's that oh, possible? You're talking about Joey. Yeah. Yeah, that's how bad they wanted him. Yeah, like he, he was Philadelphia's John Gotti. Basically. They were, yeah, exactly. They were pulling in UPS drivers. You ever drop anything, you know? Mickey, what's up, off. man? How you doing? Roger, yeah, what's I mean, up? DG. Sorry, Sorry but Vlad, Vlad didn't know him. That's true know how to interview a real gangster joe is the real deal 100 percent. i mean he Plus, he, does, he does a lot of interviews a lot but i don't know he, he seems a little bit uh i don't know 
Well, because he promised Joey that this, they were going to talk about this, 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 and that, and that's it. And he made the whole thing about Joey. They never got to the rats that he wanted to talk about no. and, 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 and the lives that they ruined and everything else by going against the code and how they made up shit and saved themselves. And every time he tries to, to in, in, inject that into this conversation, Vlad shuts him off. I know. I've noticed that, too. Big Gus, very, what's very, up, man? Very strange, right? Oh, wow. Pink Ray Panther. I'm sorry to hear that. Damn. That's crazy. Wow. Exactly. Oh, That's God how easy it is. Yep. Well, well, there's, listen, there's cases like Philly and Eddie. Listen, I'm the voice for the, like, you, why I got a podcast? Because I want to, there's innocent fucking people in jail. There's a guy right now, Marty Tassetta. 33 years he's in fucking jail. Right. Marty Tassetta. He was with uh, New Jersey, right? They did a big show, a big movie about him. Didn't they? Where, where he, um, he was representing himself and everyone else got off and he had to go do time. Mm -hmm. What's his name? I don't, I don't know if that was a movie, but. Vin Diesel played, played him. Yeah. That was the one. Really? No, I never saw it. Yeah, you, you got to see it. It's, it's funny as hell. Okay. I'll send you a link for it. Look at but Tommy I... Boyd. He calls it Dickopedia. <laughs> <laughs> Black hey, you know what? Ed... Skinny probably told Vlad he wanted to talk. What he wanted? 100% he's told him. Oh, he, he did. About. But he didn't stick to it. No. And then when he said, you promised me. That we were we were gonna talk about rats and you were never gonna have rats on your show. And Vlad turns back and says, well, I, I can't make that promise. And Joey still stays, so I give him credit for that. But I, I would have got up and left. Well, this interview is done, so have fun with it. You hey, know? he feels some type of way, it's what it is, right? It's on uh, members only, Argo. You want to watch it? Join the membership, and there'll be more on the way. He's going to get out on lies. Philly and Eddie re lied on him, lied, and out the Arco. They both lied on him. The guy's in jail for 33 fucking years. How would you feel if you were in jail for 33 years? And then I love it. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 fucking, that would really suck, man. Yeah, the find movie's me Find Me Guilty. Yeah, that's right. Costanza, what's up, man? Shout out to Chicago. Yeah, that was a really good movie. Look at Stat, Joe's face. What do you Look at do? Him. What do you say? Nigga the Baba. And innocent. And yeah. the FBI knew it. They held the fucking paper back for 25 fucking years. He was at a dentist. It's impossible for him to be there. And he's doing 33. I, I, I mean, I'm the voice for that. If I'm doing something wrong, the fucking kill me. I don't give a fuck. Put me in jail, lock me up, do what the fuck he's want to do. That's why I'm doing a podcast. Hey, Italian Stallion, what's up, man? Yeah, a lot of people ask him, why are you doing this podcast? And he just gave you the answer, right? He got And he got him out, right? Didn't he have him on the show? No, no. Just, he's not no, out. Somebody else? Tissetta's not out. No, that was someone else. Um, The other guy, they wanted him to cooperate against Joey. Right. Or face like 200 years or some shit, and he wouldn't do it. But other people took him up on that offer. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. Of, listen, everybody in jail ain't innocent. But what these people do, then they get on these fucking podcasts and say, oh, I'm for the kids. No, you ain't, you ain't for no fucking kids. You left fucking 500 kids fucking orphans. You got their fathers in jail for life sentences. You ain't for the fucking kids. The bottom line is they didn't want to go to jail. That's it. They can say whatever the fuck they want to say. That's all. That's it. What is it? Look at Sammy the Bull. Went to jail, got fucking five fucking years, killed 18 people, came out and sold kids ecstasy. <laughs> nice guy, right? right? Yeah. Beautiful. Right. Great, great That's guy. That's what he gave back <laughs> to the community. I gave turkeys out, he gave ecstasy out, the motherfucker. And I'm the bad guy. <laughs> well, now you have a podcast, which you yeah. mentioned a few times. The Skinny with Joey Merlino. Yeah. Uh, well, you actually give out football picks. Yeah. Okay. So you could actually take your gambling and, and sort of Focus it into uh, more of a legal direction this time. Yeah, I'm trying hey. to. <laughs> hey, Italian Stallion, thank you for the donation. I appreciate Very it. Very nice. Yeah, 
Sammy's wearing shirts to say the Bull 19 on it. Yes, he is. Tell me that ain't glorifying murder. That's Here, I got pure. That, that's pure evil. His son riding around with a license plate that says that. Right, because that's, that's that, they took a picture of it and made the shirt. It's crazy. That's a pic. That's a picture of his license plate, Gerard's license plate, right? Yeah. Here's a uh, Martin Tissetta. I believe I got a picture of Scammy. Scammy. What is little rat ass shirt? <laughs> his his he should have a shirt that says his dad's a rat. My dad's a rat. Right? Keep it real. At least keep it real. Didn't you have don't you have a picture of that? Yeah, I'm looking for it. <laughs> I got it. I got it somewhere around here. I thought so. I can't find it right at the moment. But yeah, that's Martin Tissetta. I don't hey, didn't know. you tell okay. me didn't you tell me that the other day that Paul, Paulie G got out? Paulie G? Paulie G is dead. <laughs> Who'd you tell me just got out? No, uh, what's his name's getting out? Testa. No, somebody One else. of the Gemini twins. That sausage uh, went up against. Oh, oh, that's what I heard. I heard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ronald. Ronald G. Alonzo. Oh, Ronnie G. I'm sorry. Yeah, I heard he got out. People are saying he got out, but I don't know if that's I, that's, true. I, that's what I heard too. Yeah, I don't know. That is Mustang Mike says that's disgusting. He wear a shirt like that. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard Ronnie G. got out, and that's a uh, sausage lips told on. So we'll see what happens on that one. Do you think these people are happy sitting in prison that long while these people are bragging? On the internet about talent on them, right? Probably not. <laughs> There'd be a lot of eyes out there. I got How's work. that working out? Hey, but I ain't charging for picks. We, we get them out on the thing. The real, I mean, we, we got fucked up. YouTube don't like us. We got shadow banned. I mean, for for no reason. Uh, I mean, I I can't figure it out. I had, we did a thing on right before Thanksgiving. I gave out five hundred turkeys, a hundred bikes. 100 coats, 25,000. I right. gave him a meal. We didn't even do a podcast. I, we just did like videos. And I had a, a friend of mine on, McKeel, who was in jail for 47 years straight. Straight. He was on death row. He was innocent. They let him out. And I'm trying to do like some prison reform to get people out of jail. And they shadow banned me. What the fuck did I say wrong? What the fuck did I do wrong? The guy's 47 years, fact, innocent. Right. And I gave out turkeys. They shadow ban me. Well, I mean, I've interviewed sports figures that have bet on their own games. Like, for example, Tim Donaghy, who was the NBA ref. He's from Philly. Uh, no, he's another rat. He's from right. Philly, that motherfucker. He cooperated. Yeah. Uh, do you know him personally? No, I don't know. No. Okay. Uh, you know, if you go back, there's Pete Rose, who got caught betting on his own games, which look is why they, he's look not. Look another, another Philly. The Philly. You look know, what they uh, did to that guy. The greatest fucking hitter of all time you can't get in the hall of fame you got a you cannot get in the hall of fame you got a rod's a rat they're all they're all in stereo rat a rod works for baseball tonight p rose can't get in the hall of fame they got baseball players doing commercials right now go to fucking FanDuel and bet and this guy bet and he can't get in the hall of fame they hate him right. he's black more like me they fucking hate him yeah no i interviewed him recently um he's a good man i think he's he, he he's finally accepted the fact that in his lifetime he's not going to be in the hall of fame maybe after he dies they might give him one but yeah. at this point he's not going to be in the in the hall of fame yeah he said ronnie he's gonna tie those lips in a knot <laughs> how you been i'm great man how are you kev i'm doing mustang great. mike is 100 percent right again he did it well, he said I, Joey was going to say something about Philly and Eddie at the beginning, and Vlad interrupted him as usual. Yeah, yeah. he did. Hey, he does that quite a bit. I saw hey, this this part. Yeah. Listen, I'm not saying I'm the best interviewer ever. I'm not, but I'm getting better. And you are getting better. Every time I interview another person, it gets better and better. But. I'm going to keep doing my thing. And I got some major interviews lined up 
some uh, quite a few mafia uh, associated figures. You guys will see they're going to be dropping like bang, bang. And mm. um, I'm sure I'll get criticism, but that's OK. More, it's expected, you know, more people from the boxing world. Yeah. Uh, from the Hollywood. We're going to we're uh -huh. going to expand our horizons. But listen, I, of course, I'm going to get some criticism. Right. But when I have people on this show, it's not that I agree with everything they say. People are like, you believe this? I'm just letting them tell their story. I'm not there to be the judge and executioner for these people. I'm here right. to get their stories out, and that's it. These people are taking my show a little too serious. Like, they need to get it together, work on their show. Mm -hmm. huh? It's been almost 30 years now. I'll be right back, Sonny. All right. Hold I, the, this part hold, is great. Hold the fort down. So, um, uh, you got to eventually. You got to quit worrying about it. I know what I know. What kind of player I was. My fans know what kind of player I was. Hey, Francis. My teammates, my opposition knew what kind of player I was. You know what I mean? And uh, you're not going to put you in the Hall of Fame because you bet on your team to win. Do you really think I'm the only player ever to bet on baseball? No. No one can be that naive. Yep. So. Uh, I'll have to wait till I die, and I won't be part of it. But uh, that's when they'll put me in after I after I die. I mean, did you ever know any sports, you know, players or or refs or anything else like that that became degenerate gamblers and started to kind hey, of change the rules a little bit and start betting on their own games? No, nah, I wish I did. <laughs> he said, nah, nah. "I wish I did." He wish he has. <laughs> He wished he had the people that were betting on their own game. I'm sure he does. Sonny, where are you from? New England also? Italian Stallion's asking you a question, Sonny. Oh, shit. Sonny. I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Tell happened. I'm all talking oh, to your picture. Uh, Italian Stallion. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Sonny, tell you, Sonny says, you from New England also? And you're just No, saying, I'm from New York. He's from New York. From the Bronx. The Bronx. I'm now I live in Florida. So you were Unfortunately, born in I'm, I was born in Manhattan, actually. Mother Cabrini Hospital. Oh, yeah, that's right. But um, he's 100% right here, uh, Pete Rose. That yeah. when he's get, when he's dead, somebody's gonna go. Well, you know what? Let's put him in now, because yeah. they wanted him to give names. He never he never talks about that. He did in the beginning. He was and and he used to say, "I don't know what anybody else is doing. All I know is, yeah, I bet some games. I never bet on my own team." And they just had a hard on for him, and it stayed all this time, over thirty years. Yeah, that's crazy because he's it is. he's remembered for that. I remember when that was happening. I was young, man. Terrible. But yeah. at this point, watch this part again. He's not gonna be in the in the Hall of Fame. It's been almost thirty years now. Yeah. So, uh, you got to eventually. You got to quit worrying about it. He used to slide headfirst into the into a uh, home plate, man. I used to be really into baseball. I sucked at playing it, but <laughs> you know. I used to collect well, baseball cards and all that type of stuff. Yeah, me too. Until my mother threw out my box, I like the killer. But uh, and uh, Ernest says right here, Rose, he ruined the player's career with a cheap shot in the All Star game, which is true. I mean, he came barreling in like thirty fucking miles an hour. Yeah, lower his shoulder and flatten yeah. that guy out. Man. Yeah, Whoa. he's like this. Boom. It's an all he goes, hey, I play, I play baseball All Star game or a regular game. The same way every time. You know what? Wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Nobody, yeah. nobody gives a hundred percent at an all star game. It's supposed to be for entertainment. And back hey. then, it didn't matter who won. It didn't establish home field advantage or anything like that. It was just, you know, a nice day for all the fans to watch all your favorite all stars play the game. You know, yeah. sometimes the pitcher would lay it in so you could crank it out. 
you know, try to steal second. Everybody used to have a lot of fun. Remember the home run derbies and all that oh, shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, I remember all that. That was, that was ruined by the steroids. Yeah. You know, with Sammy and Mark and uh, all of them <laughs> all juiced up and hitting these gigantic home runs and. Yeah, I know Italian Stallion. I know. I'm I'm working on this documentary, but we'll keep that for the uh for the people that really love the show. <laughs> right. I know what I know what kind of player I was. My fans know what kind of player I was. My teammates, my opposition knew what kind of player I was. You know what I mean? And uh, you're not going to put you in the Hall of Fame because you bet on your team to win. Do you really think I'm the only player ever to bet on baseball? No. The only one that got caught. <laughs> right? Yeah, everybody else cooperated. They did, right? They did that on the betting. They did it on the on the uh, uh, injections, the steroids, the performance enhancing. That's all so crazy. It started getting crazy with all that shit. Yeah. No one can be back in the day. You Babe Ruth used to play, come play to the game, still drunk from the night before. For breakfast, <laughs> yeah. he'd have like seven fucking hot dogs, and he'd get up and smack the crap out of the ball. Yeah, Mickey Mantle, man. Mickey Mantle was my favorite player. Me too. Anyone know Me a too. good company that fixes doors? I got drunk for St. Patty's Day <laughs> and pushed the door in. You pushed in your front door, John Rucker? Uh-oh. Oh. It sounds like a good night. To the door. I did this to the door. Nah. I did this to the door. I pushed the door in. Happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> I forgot to wear green, man. It was a great uh, yeah. service at church. So, did you guys know that St. Patrick was Italian? Was Italian. Did you know that? I did. And, uh, did you see him dye the river in Chicago green yesterday? Oh, uh, every year, yeah. I think yeah, that was, was great. It was pretty cool. And the story on how how it all came to be, I put it up on my um on the community post if you guys want to check it out. Okay. Damn it, Mandy, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Mustang Mike says yeah. if, if Pete Rose admitted it right away. He was only going to get a 30-day suspension, and that is a fact. It is a fact. But he, he he kept denying it and denying it, and they had to spend more money and hire more investigators and everything else. And they had him dead to right, but I just Hated. think it's too it's too much. It's 30 years already. He's a legend, man. He's an <laughs> absolute legend in the game of baseball. And again, it comes down to personality. You don't have to like him. Just like, Just what's look. his name? Just like Larry Rolla is a legend in horse racing. Right. And being involved with all that. I don't I don't know if he's in any Hall of Fames. He, he was brought up. One of the, he was influential back in the day. He was with all these major people, you know. And I got more with Larry Rolla. Shout out to Larry Rolla. Go check out his podcast, Against All Odds. It's pretty good. Cool. You know what? Back in the seventies, mid to, mid to late seventies, I hung out with a lot of trainers from the Trotters. You know, and yeah. uh, oh, you cannot believe what they would they, what they would do. I mean, you know, hit the horse with a with a needle, and uh, it was uh, you know they would bet with each other. Listen, I I got I got three payments coming up on my car and my house, and I'm way behind. All right. Well, you're right next to me. Then I'll pull back, and you beat me for the win. We'll block yeah. out the six. Oh, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, Larry, Larry told me that it's kind of like walking a dog, and all you got to do is hold it back a little bit. That's it. Yeah. So yep. he would yep. he would go because it seems really intricate how you would fix these races, but it's not. No, it's no. Like you just pay the the horse racers, like uh, you pay four of them. Say there's five racers. For six, you pay four of them, and they hold their horses back, and you know who's gonna win. That's it. Yeah, easy. Like, there was a guy in the Trotters in, in Jersey, New York, named John Chapman, was the king of that. The king. 
You'd see him coming down the stretch, like over Rose or Raceway, which isn't there, of course, anymore. But and he'd have like like a four or five uh, length lead going down. All of a sudden, you see him standing up in his little chariot, leaning all the way back like this, holding the horse. <laughs> <in it. laughs> oh my God, we'd be screaming. I used to go to Roosevelt Raceway with uh, uh, Lenny Montana, who played Luca Brazzi in The Godfather. Yeah, yeah. Big time degenerate gambler. And, we, you know, every Thursday we would meet and have a blast. Both of us drinking Johnny Black, betting on all these bum horses and everything else. A lot of fun. How was that guy as a person, Luca Brazzi? Hey, he, was, he was a great guy. He was a little scary. Yeah. And he wasn't, and he wasn't too smart, but, you know, with the way he talked. But for what he had to do for, you know, who he was with, he didn't have to be smart. He was, yeah. uh, he was a big, big, big monster dude. They used him as muscle, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that scene in The Godfather way. where he's like saying, uh, he's rehearsing what he's going to say to the Don. You remember that part? When he's sitting outside the house and on this day, I uh, hope it's uh, your, your grandchildren will be masculine ones. And he was actually sitting there rehearsing his lines off the script because he kept forgetting the lines. And Francis Ford Coppola saw that and said, quick, get the camera on him. And he filmed them while he was actually being himself, trying to remember the line. And he left it in and it was perfect. It was absolutely wow. perfect. See, that's behind the scenes. There you go. In the Godfather that you won't get anywhere else. Right? Yeah, that's right. Hold on. Let me flush this one. I have a feeling. He's up your ass, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the content. Emphasis on so, con. Uh, I'll have to wait till I die, and I won't be part of it, but uh, that's when it'll put me in after I, after I die. I mean... Did you ever know any sports, you know, players or, or refs or anything else like that that became degenerate gamblers and started to kind of fudge the rules a little bit and start betting on their own games? No, nah, I wish I did. <laughs> nah, nah. No, I wish Not I at all. did. The kid Donahue, I didn't yeah. know. I don't, I don't know him. I know he's from Philly. I was away when he got pinched. Well, yeah. I mean, what Tim said was actually pretty interesting. What he said was that he didn't necessarily make calls in order to win bets he they, said that he knew coming into a game based on who the refs were personally he knows which refs like which players and which refs dislike which players and they'll do certain calls based on their right. own personal you know likes and dislikes and based on that he could beat the spread i mean when it came to betting on games did you base it mostly on the relationship between the refs and certain players or oh, were other things more important than that? I think that was a, a major thing that was involved and also, you know, what the league wanted called and there'd be a morning meeting uh, at 11 a.m. before every game and there were certain things that they wanted you to crack down on and I would take that and, you know, consider who was in the game and who they wanted those things cracked down on and know that it was going to put a team at a disadvantage. Right, yeah, they know. And, uh, you know, I at think one it, point, I the mafia found out about it allegedly, and then you know they, they started getting out of his action. And... They always blame us. The mafia. What? Us. Did you he hear said that? us? Did you us hear again? That? Yeah, why? Well, uh, it's kind of weird. That was a weird moment right there. I caught that. Mafia found out about it allegedly, and then you know they, they started the getting out of his action. And... They always blame us. The mafia. They always blame the mafia. The fuck, but mafia. The, the, the guy was fixing games. Right. I think every I think football's fixed. I think the Super Bowl was fixed. You think 100% this What do you think? Was the Super Bowl fixed? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All that overtime shit and all that. It was I had a friend of mine that said all year long they play they bust their ass to try to get to the to the big dance and once they make it to the big stage it's taken out of their hands because it's just too much fucking money. That has well, to has to be spread out. Yeah, overtime it was generating a lot more money, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going. Oh my overtime. god! Come on, man! Yeah. And the way they played, you could tell that they're not trying. Like right, right. It was just if they ever out. showed out, there was that one play where uh, 
where Mahomes is running and he's running into the end zone, they're not touching him. They got their hands up. He's right there. You know what I'm saying? You could give him a fucking hickey. He's so close to you, and they don't touch him, and he runs in for the... Uh, yeah, let it... oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, fuck. Crazy. This, this That's why I only I only bet on uh, professional wrestling. That's the only sport that I that I would bet on. Professional wrestling. <laughs> so, w- it's a WWE. <laughs> That's right. It's the only sport I bet on. Me too, because it's so real, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's fixed 100 why do you say that well they got the extra quarter because he fixed it no <laughs> yeah i'm joking <laughs> how do you know what do you mean <laughs> he, he rigged the election too right and he rigged the election that's the that's that's yeah. the best yeah hilarious and they said that he rigged it so biden would win well yeah they even got that wrong hi maureen Maureen, what's going on? They played the whole overtime quarter, so it's seven million dollars for every thirty-second commercial. Thirty seconds. You do yeah. the math. The fucking guy, they <laughs> blocked the extra point. The San Fran said they didn't know if they if they scored, they didn't know they would win the game. How the fuck you don't know the rules? <laughs> <I'm-> <laughs> it's true, hundred percent true. They blocked that field goal. There's no way, man. No way. Know the fucking rules. They they changed they, the rules recently. Yeah, won. but it's if they up. score there, they win. Right. The fucking game's over. How the fuck's he kick a field goal? And the uh, holding exactly. calls. The holding calls were horrible. Yeah. They yeah. just wanted them. It's all script. The Taylor Swift, all that fucking shit. <laughs> right. That was bullshit, man. They kept going the camera to that fucking to her and that other chick with the upside down cross on. It's nice. It's a nice love story. Come on. Yeah, come on. Like, well, they say that Biden was in on it too. I mean, he actually even put up, put up a little. Yeah, uh, Biden. Yeah. He don't. He didn't even know what the fuck he was watching. <laughs> Another six months will be dead a year. Who knows, man? In another six months, he'll be. Oh dead my a god! Year. He'll be dead a year. Holy shit! He's already dead. Oh man. <laughs> Edward, That's what's funny. up, man? Rangers number one. How are you? Thanks for joining us. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The best podcast yeah, you, on YouTube. Do me a favor. Play that again because that, that was pretty hysterical. <laughs> Another six months, you'll be dead a year. How the fuck you don't know the rules? I know the fucking rules. They they changed the rules recently. Yeah, but if they score here, they win. Right. The fucking game's right. over. How the fuck's he kick a field goal? And the uh, holding exactly. calls. The holding calls were horrible. Yeah. They just wanted them. It's all script. The Taylor Swift, all that fucking shit. Right. Well, they say that Biden was in on it too. I mean, he actually even put up, put up a little. Yeah, uh, Biden. You know, yeah. He don't. He didn't even know what the fuck he was watching. <laughs> Another six months, he'll be dead a year. <laughs> Who knows, man? Who knows? Oh, uh, man. That's... Joey Merlino, man. appreciate you coming in. Thank uh, you for having me. Make sure me. everyone check out, you know, your podcast on YouTube, The Skinny with Joey Merlino. No, it's on Patreon. Patreon. Go to Patreon and subscribe to The Skinny with Joey Merlino and Little Snuff. Oh, it's on Patreon Yeah, now. fuck YouTube. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. It that sounded was the like best. Like you said, fuck you. <laughs> Vlad didn't like know. It. Vlad didn't know what to do when he said that. He's like, "Oh, you you can't say that, Joey." <laughs> Your podcast on YouTube, the Skinny with Joey Merlino. No, it's on Patreon. Oh, it's on Patreon. Yeah, now. fuck YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so on Patreon, go yeah. check out the Skinny with Joey Merlino. Uh, someone who has been betting for a very long time. And has, has paid the price for betting, so you know that he takes it extra seriously. Right. Uh, appreciate your time, man. Thank you, I wish my you buddy. all the best. All right. Take care. Thank you. That's, that's what it is. Peace. <laughs> He's like, Thank you, my bro. Thank you for being here, Vlad. <laughs> he welcomed him to his own podcast. Welcome. But that was, in the beginning, right? Yeah. Welcome. Let's all say welcome to Joey Molino. I right, welcome. <laughs> He, he welcomed himself. He was like, what?
it's kind of odd. Did I see that we have somebody else here from Scotland? Probably. Here you go. Rangers number one. Monk in the house. Hi from Scotland troops. Nice. Shout out to Scotland. I'm working on something for the Irish folks out there. We got we got a lot of content on the way, and we're going to be doing some shows at night as well, and um, we're going to be bringing right. guests on some live. We're going to chop it up with some pretty influential people. And, yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be good. And you I know, it, I, I still it. I still got the normal interviews dropping. So if you want to mm -hmm. see exclusive interviews, join the membership. Or don't. It's nothing, too. What are you charging? $1.99? Yeah, $1.99. Yeah, that's nothing. Kevin, you what's up, man? The interview on Vlad was, was fantastic. Just classic. The only in thing its own way. Up, in its yeah. own way, it was. But the only thing that sucked, he kept cutting him off when he was going to say different things. Like, mm. he was going to talk about something. Like if I'm interviewing someone and I and I cut them off and I know they're gonna say something, I'll I'll bring it up again. What was that? Yeah, I'm sorry. What what were you gonna say? Yeah. Yeah. You might have saved Joey a couple of times. Who knows? Nah, it was pre-recorded, so he cut it up. There's he probably said a bunch of stuff we don't get to see because it that's it was true. Hundred yes. percent edited. The whole that's interview right. was edited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Chill. Now when they're done, right? Do, do, does Joey stay and watch the editing and say, take that out? No. No. It's all no. Vlad. Yeah, they leave. He leaves and it gets edited. Hey, Chris. He says, I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm here to stay. Well, we're leaving. <laughs> yeah, we're out. Thanks for joining us, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. You can stay all you want. <laughs> but we got things to do and people to see. Damn it, Mandy. That's true, though. Damn it, Mandy. I've never seen an interview ask someone. Absolutely. How do they feel so many times. That's that's when you, you're treading on dangerous ground and you don't know exactly what to say. So. Okay, okay, okay. Stanfa. So your best friend died in your arms. How did that feel? What the fuck? You went to jail. How did that feel? You so when you got out, how did it feel when you got out? <laughs> Gotta ask him like what happened next? Like take it you take put, it a different direction. Like what happened? So when next? they close the door in a jail cell and you put your hand down your pants. How did, How that, did feel? that feel? How did it feel when you <laughs> when you made a call from jail? <laughs> what the fuck? See you later, Ty. Videos. Have a good day. I just got put onto your content. Sorry I'm late, but I'm here to stay. I met future videos. <laughs> <laughs> he got shot in the ass, too. Stax and Sonny, you guys have a great day. Thank you, man. Take care, you everyone. Too. Italian Stallion. All you guys, yeah, I appreciate you. When the bullet went into your that? ass. <laughs> yeah. How when did the that bullet feel? went into your ass. How did that feel? How did that feel? <laughs> He'd be like, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I hope you have a great day. We got some things that are going to be dropping. You guys will be pretty surprised. Yeah, man. You too. Everybody have a great day. Yeah, I hope you I feel better, I don't know what the like around the country, but we got some heavy rain on the way. Oh, you do? Yeah. Where? How? How is it when it rains down there in Florida? How do you it's... feel when it rains down there? <laughs> <laughs> It'll come down like heavy, like just the end of the world, and then it'll just stop. It's crazy. It's crazy. But we need a break because right now it's 88 degrees down here. Does it, is it rain like this? <laughs> Join the club, Sonny. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, have a great one, and we'll see you guys soon. We got a lot of things in the future, and we're just getting started. If you want to see exclusive, I gotta go. I gotta go play Assassin's Creed. So. If you want to see some exclusive interviews, join the membership, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Happy you guys like this remember. Content, 
If you guys like this content, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get our videos every time they drop. And if you don't like this content, too bad. Start your own podcast. And remember, don't be a bitch. <laughs> Peace. Thanks, man.